I've been getting a lot of questions about my uh, latest setup for the Blackmagic Packet Cinema 4K camera. So uh, hopefully this video will answer all of those questions and more. Uh, so I'm going to talk about kind of again my latest rig, the cage that I'm using, all the different accessories, how I power the camera. I figured out an even better way to do that. Uh, then my monitoring solution. Also, I'm going to talk about um, different lens adapters, or more specifically uh, the speed boosters and even uh, the, the native lenses that I use and why. I'll even show you some ISO tests comparing this camera to a few other cameras and also a quirky little thing I discovered when you're shooting in RAW uh, in this camera in various ISO settings. Uh, something you definitely want to be you know, watching out for. So if you're interested in any of these topics then uh, sit back and uh, hopefully you enjoy this video. So first I'm going to show you guys this rig. Um, I got the camera in a new cage after testing all these various different cages. This is the last one that came in and I like it the most and it's actually the cheapest out of all the cages I've tested out. This one's from Small Rig and what's cool about Small Rig in general, I have actually been using a lot of their parts for a lot of my different cameras. For example my Ursa, you know, uh, Ursa Mini Pro cameras, they all use various parts from Small Rig. And the, uh, the reason is because Small Rig makes you know quality products, but they also kind of make it almost like Lego for uh, camera geeks. Uh, they basically create all kinds of different pieces and parts, many of which are actually in interchangeable from different cameras. And so I've actually thrown in here a few things that I've been using on my Ursa cameras. Now I just wanted to do a quick shout out to the sponsor of today's video, which is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 25,000 classes in design, business, and more. Uh, so if you guys enjoy watching my videos where I share my filmmaking knowledge, then you're definitely going to enjoy uh, a lot of the, the classes that are offered on Skillshare. Uh, whether you want to learn how to do animation or, for example, photography, color grading, for example, uh, and various different programs, editing, or, for example, fundamentals of DSLR photography, uh, like I said, editing in Adobe Premiere and a whole lot more. Uh, Skillshare is actually very affordable. Uh, you can get a whole annual subscription, uh, which is going to come out to less than $10 a month. Uh, and you, you can join more than 7 million creators already learning on Skillshare. It also, the first 500 of my subscribers to use the link in the description uh, will get a two months free trial. Uh, so you can uh, give Skillshare a try. Now my setup is pretty simple and that's because I, I, one of the big things I like about this camera is, is that it's a small camera uh, and I don't want to build it up too big. Um, so there's kind of two variations that I usually go with. One is kind of like what you see up here, which is it has the cage, allows me to attach some accessories, like I say if I need a microphone or a wireless uh, you know, microphone receiver, then I can attach it here. And plus it gives me a handle here. The handle allows me to kind of separate my hands a little bit away from the center of gravity of the camera, which then means that my handheld shots are going to be a bit smoother. Um, another thing it allows me to do is to attach accessories on the top, like for example, uh, this little thing, which is like a little monitor mount, and it's a swivel uh, from small rig. So it'll, it's very sturdy, keeps the monitor nice and you know secure monitor will not move around but it also allows you as you can see to articulate the monitor and move it you know kind of point it up and down so whether you're working with the camera on low angles or high angles and you need to look up or down at the at the screen and see what you're actually recording this allows you to do that another cool thing i want to talk about is this battery that i've got here that's powering the monitor i've actually got uh, all together actually i end up buying four of these batteries uh, and these batteries what's great about them is that they're sort of like a standard Sony NPF style battery. So they'll work with a lot of accessories. They can power your lights and things like that. A lot of these monitors, but these ones have just enough sort of, you know, have just enough power or current in there that it will actually allow me to power both the monitor, but also this camera. And with the monitor on and the camera recording, I've actually been doing tests and it's, I'm getting around two hours give and take depends on the temperature and various other things but around two hours it will run uh, so you know that's way better than, than the, the battery life that you're getting with just just a built-in kind of you know the batteries that you can put in the, in the camera uh, another cool thing is that they have like a little gauge so you can click it and you'll actually see how much juice you have left in these batteries uh, so that's always handy and then aside from uh, basically because the, the way it works is that these batteries here on the top 
they have or on one side they have a little DC plug so this DC plug allows you to plug in this cable which I showed in my previous video about my rig this cable which then goes to a dummy battery on the back of, on the bottom of this camera so I can plug this in here on the top and like I said I can power the monitor power the, the camera um, now if you're not going to power the monitor let's say in, oh, you mentioned maybe let's say you don't have the monitor on all the time you can still be powering the camera with this and then it's, you're going to get even longer battery life cool little batteries they're cheap actually uh, you can get them on Amazon and uh, like I said it has DC connection on one side and then on the other side you actually have a USB connection so you can power other USB accessories um, maybe you have a wireless follow focus or things things like that uh, you know that you might want to po uh, power with that or I guess the way that they designed it or at least the, how they advertise it that uh, the company that makes these batteries they're saying that you can power your cell phone uh, which I, I guess yeah is, is one of the other purposes but anyways you have USB and DC connection under and obviously you can power whatever you plug it into another thing I like about this cage is like I said it has a lot of different attachment points all over at quarter 23 inch uh, of an inch uh, screws uh, which allows you to put things like for example a handle I here, and here I have the simple kind of wooden handle there's this other one that's a little bit bigger and it allows you to actually slot the SSD in there and then connect here you know to your camera and this way it's kind of nice because you can hide and also protect the SSD while you're recording with it and you still have a handle so that's that's another little you know accessory that you, you guys can look into and all of them will just attach with these simple thumb screws and you can easily just unscrew it and take it out um, you, uh, the, the cage itself has attachments here for uh, like a shoulder you know, camera strap uh, you have also uh, what do we call it here you have a NATO rail so you can slide in and out the monitors which I'll show you guys uh, you can attach a whole bunch of things you have cold shoe mount actually built into this and I actually got another cold shoe mount from small rig that then I can attach another cold shoe mount anywhere here on this cage because it attaches using a quarter 20 screw and then that I can use for another microphone attachment or uh, like, like I said maybe wireless microphone receiver things like that um, so very cool cage uh, as on the bottom here you see I have my Manfrotto uh, base plate so I can go handheld when I need to I just slide it onto my uh, Manfrotto tripod and uh, and I like shooting with this camera like in this configuration basically most of the time because again it's it's very very mobile and and I can again quickly adjust things now sometimes when for example I don't need a big monitor then I'll, I'll I have another monitor from field world that I will throw on there that's a little smaller also works well the reason why I like this one is because it's even bigger than the you know the beautiful display here on the back of the camera but this monitor is actually very very bright it is uh, I think it's, what is it is almost 2000 nits uh, anyways I'm gonna post the specs for this uh, and also the same thing on my website so like I said it's very bright to the point where you can use it outside in broad daylight without any problems uh, but you can also uh, you know you can adjust the settings if you don't want it to, to pull that much power but even with this monitor's brightness all the way up uh, again it still has a very good you know life like it doesn't suck the batteries dry as quickly like if you were to just power the, the monitor with this battery you can power it for almost four hours so uh, that you know just just kind of shows you now um uh, the version that i have there's two versions there's one that's just hdmi version that's a very cheap version of the monitor this one's more expensive because it has sdi connections in here because again i also use this on my ursa mini cameras which uh which have only have sdi connections but yeah great monitor this is from uh, field world ultra bright uh, and anyways the exact model and the specs again i'm going to post in the description so the, like I said, this is kind of my go-to kind of rig. Now, uh, another cool thing about this cage is that, again, you can reconfigure it and, and especially if you get the other um, small rig accessories, whether it's the base plate, the rails, the shoulder pad and all that stuff, you can actually end up building this into a big sort of a proper cinema camera, uh, which looks sort of like this. So what you see up here is basically this sort of, a, I would say, full-blown cinema rig that I built for this camera. What I mean by that is that you know, I have a rail system, I have handles here too, uh, I have a shoulder pad, I have a big V-mount battery that's powering the camera and this will power it for about four and a half hours. So it's really great, you don't have to worry about, uh, again, you know, having other power sources or anything like that. Um, and it's basically, yeah, like a big massive, you know, camera setup that it will actually work great if you put it on your shoulder because as you see, 
you have this really nice uh, padded shoulder uh, a pad here from a small rig uh, it's, it's got this gel padding it's very comfortable um, it also just you know doesn't slip basically it's not gonna accidentally slip off of your shoulder uh, but also here on the back I attached a v-mount battery that acts sort of as a counterweight so that it again it's comfortable to put on your shoulder and kind of operate it like this so yeah if you put it like this as you can see it's you know it's almost like self-balancing it you know it, it obviously depends what kind of a lens you put on there if you you can still put a mat box with filters if you wanted to uh, because you have the rails there but uh, you know again depends how much weight you put on the front but it definitely helps having this weight there in the back yet what i like about this battery is the fact that this battery as you can see it's uh it's big and heavy and provides a lot of power for the camera but uh, it's very uh, slim very you know it's not as bulky and high so i can still have full access here to my touch screen in the back and i can you know easily navigate change the settings on the camera so that's the first thing and uh, if you're wondering how i connected this uh basically this uh, battery to the camera well basically it's connected uh you, you can either buy one of these cables that are like a um, you know p-tap uh to the little you know uh, I don't even know what's the, I think it's like a Limo kind of a connection that this camera has, a 12 volt connection. So you, you can get a cable like that, but if you want to save yourself some money, then you can basically make a cable like, like the one that I made here. Uh, and, and you can just plug that in there. Uh, and this, I basically made this very easily by chopping the AC cable that came with the camera and I can still use it with my AC adapter. Basically what I just did is I chopped it off and I welded these little uh, DC plugs that you can buy for a few bucks. Uh, uh, I soldered, I should say, I soldered these little plugs to it. And then I, uh, what's it called, I soldered the other end of this, you know, P-tap cable. And that plugs into the, the V-mount battery. And as you can see, it powers the camera. And it's going to say here basically AC because it's, it, you know, it's plugged in through here. So it assumes it's AC. Uh, but you can also see how much battery life you have by, you know, here on the side of the battery here, you actually have, and that's one, another reason why I like this battery. Like I said, a lot of juice, but slim, uh, and it's, you know, provides you here, uh, you can see clearly how much battery you have left. Now, another thing I have up here is I have, um, you know, my base plate here attached, so I can still easily uh, put this on my tripod. Uh, so if I don't want to have it in a handheld configuration, I can just, you know, pop it on my tripod and if I need to go handheld I take it off and and it works great another thing I have is um, this is a, a monitor basically for a, like an AC so let's say if you have somebody pulling focus assisting you you probably want another monitor for that person this one is like a small field world monitor works great nice image quality now as you can see it's all attached here to the tap here to this handle uh, and that's kind of maybe the next thing I'll show you guys uh, the ca the cage itself has a lot of attachment points, which is you know what I like about this this setup. And one thing that I really like about it is that it uh, I can basically attach a 15 millimeter rod, which is basically what's holding this whole monitor setup. So here is basically the, my monitor, and it's using this small rig uh, little accessory that allows you to again you can move it up and down on this arm. Uh, you have another nab here. That allows you to like articulate it so you can change the angle however you want it and it's all very very sturdy because it's all runs off of a 50 millimeter rod that this rod basically goes in here to the top handle of the rig so you can put in here and so again if you want to attach other accessories you can do that so that's one of the sort of the top handles that you can buy and the way that small rig kind of ha you know sells these things is they'll sell you the cage separately so you can order that Amazon or whatever whatever it is that you want to think I get it from uh, I provide some of the, the links and places where I got it from uh, So you can get for example the cage then if you want to get this handle you can get this handle or you can get Another handle that I got to test out again from small rig or another one um, And you know, there's all these different again. It's kind of like like Lego for camera geeks You know, it allows you to really configure it and only get the parts that you need so you don't need to and that's the reason why this cage is also so affordable is because you don't need to go right away and buy this big rig with all these parts that maybe you don't really care about. You just buy the cage and then let's say if you care about the handle, you buy the handle. Then if you care about having an extra cold shoe mount, you buy that and all that stuff. So if you're going to be using this, let's say, uh, you know, like, like I'm showing up, up here where I also have an extra monitor for, a, you know, a camera assistant, a basically operator. 
uh, then you might even want to get the the other um, you know field world monitor, the, the ultra bright one that's nice and big because somebody who's pulling focus here for you probably wants also a nice big display. This is another field world mo monitor, the M MA5. Great little monitor, but it's just not as bright outside as it is as the other one is. But if you want something smaller, then again, you have this small thing. Uh, the arm that this is attached to is another small rig accessory you can get. Uh, this is like the most expensive accessory. This arm, it's eighty bucks. Uh, last time I you know, when I bought it, eighty bucks. But this thing is, you know, it's worth spending that money. This is like the best articulated magic arm that I've used out of any any brand, out of any company, and. And, the, and it's something that I'm using not just on here, but this is actually from my Ursa Mini uh, Pro uh, rig that I have. And that's actually the one of the reason why I have all these different parts I wanted to kind of show you. Is because these are parts that I kind of accumulated over the years that I kept on getting from small rig. Uh, because they have, you know, parts that you can use pretty much on any camera these days. So you can, you, you know, like I said, this is what I was using with my Ursa Mini rig when I wanted to have a monitor there that I can quickly adjust or sometimes for my wireless video system. Uh, the, the the transmitter uh, the you know the handles I actually have all these different handles because again I use these on my Ursa Mini Pro rigs so I have all these different handles left over and actually well this handle is actually I used it with my Sony A6500 rig or kind of kit that I built for, uh, again using different small rig parts this top arm like I, I was just saying it's a great little arm because it has a cold shoe mount here in the front has another cold shoe mount in the back here uh, or it could be front because you can mount the handle either way so if you want to attach another microphone or other accessories or wireless video you know or, or yeah wireless video system or wireless let's say microphone receiver things like that you can do that and then another thing i like is that here you as you can just loosen it and this is using this nato rail system you can just basically put it in and you can adjust it where you want it to be you can move it left and right and then you just tighten it and it stays there nice and sturdy it holds the whole rig together so that's the cool thing about this handle now like i said if you don't like this type of handle then they have another one which this one is cool too because it uh will go to and uh, attaches to a cold shoe mount and it also has the 15 millimeter rod uh here attachment so if you want to have you know the monitor attached like i had it or some other accessories you can do that and the cage itself actually uh, the cage itself comes with a, a cold shoe mount here on the left side uh, it has the NATO rail up here, and then here I attached another cold shoe mount that again I got. This was five bucks, I think it was. It comes like a little package, again from Small Rig. So it's like this little cold shoe mount that you can attach anywhere. Like if you wanted to have a cold shoe mount here for another microphone or something, you can do that because you have all these quarter twenty and three eighths attachments all over the cage. But yeah, let's say if I wanted to just attach this handle, you know, I can attach it, and as you can see, again it holds it nice and sturdy. Uh, and if I want to quickly take it out and maybe put it in reverse, again, I can do that. So that's the cool thing about, again, small rig. Lego for camera geeks. <laughs> uh, all right. Now let me show you, uh, what is it? Oh, yeah, this other handle maybe quickly I'll also show you. This is another handle that I tend not to use as much. I had this on my Ursa Mini Pro rig because I kind of had it, had it there permanently because it's a good, you know, handle. It's the cheapest one that they, that they offer, the top handle has a cold shoe mount here on the front. The only thing is it's it's kind of like if you're going to mount it, it's permanently mounted because you just have these two here, uh, basically spots where you put the screws in and you can attach it here. You could attach it actually here to the top of this cage because it fits it perfectly there. You put those two screws and it's going to be sturdy. But if you want something that you can quickly remove, then this isn't maybe the handle that I would recommend. If let's say you don't care about having a top handle, but you want to have a, a ability to attach the 15 millimeter rod on the top so you can Again, attach monitors there and things like that. And they, again, provide this. This is, again, just a few bucks. This little part that allows you to put a 15 millimeter rod there. And this part, again, you would you can attach it here, 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 anywhere on the cage, right? It attaches using the quarter 20. They even have little, like, quick release plates. Um, if you want to, again, have something that you can have quick release. Or maybe the camera itself, you want to be able to take it off and on uh, quickly. Uh, even these uh, here, as you can see, these handles, you know, they're just basically two handles that kind of float around freely and on this 50 millimeter rod. So again, you can adjust the width of it. If you want it to be really wide, you can just get, you know, longer rods. Um, so you, you attach it and then whatever you want, you like it, you just tighten it. Uh, and then the same thing here, you can, you know, move it up and down the, the rails. But let's say if you don't want the handle, 
then you can just take it off, take off this whole thing assembly. And or maybe you just want, because uh, I know originally I actually end up just I just bought one of these handles. They're very nice, kind of they have this nice firm kind of a textured rubber grip, uh, and they're good handles. And like I said, you can adjust it just you know because if you have longer rails, you can have it uh, kind of wider grip. But I originally actually just bought just one of these because I, a lot of times I, I like to have basically this thing mounted like right there, just one handle. And then that would allow me to like, oh, because this camera, you know, if you don't put too many things on it, it's not going to be a big heavy setup. And this way it would allow me to just hold it like this with one hand and the other hand was on the fallow focus. So if another thing is uh, that I like about this sort of setup is like I said, I can put uh, the V-mount battery and the way I attach the V-mount battery is, uh, let me show you guys is uh, basically there's this V battery mount plate that uh, you know small rig makes and it's this little part and again if you don't care about it don't buy it but if you just want to mount a V mount battery it's a passive you know basically V mount battery uh, mount um, so it's not it's not going to draw any power or anything like that so if you have batteries like this one that have P tap or USB out connections then you can just use these V-mount batteries to power the, you can power the camera, you can power the, the monitor, you can power various things. Uh, and again, this is just like a little plate that I attached to this shoulder rig, right? Now, again, if you don't care about it, or let's say you don't want to have this big shoulder rig and, you know, basically this big camera setup, then you'll probably take this off and you can have it, you know, something small like this. You can still hold it. And this is one thing that I like about this cage. Uh, I, my other previous sort of favorite cage was the one from Came TV, but sort of the annoying thing is, well, first of all, it's a lot more money. So when you actually consider the fact that this one's so much cheaper, it's, it's just a better deal. But it's uh, the other one had like basically this metal part here on you know where the grip is was this straight block of metal like this it was really sticking out and it just was uncomfortable. Like if I put my hand here, I couldn't quite grasp the the grip. But here, I don't know if you can see it, but it's kind of tapered off and it gets nice and thin and it kind of almost blends into the original handle of the camera. So with this cage, I cannot normally grip this. You know, if you have small hands, you might still have problems because, well, overall just the grip is bigger, but uh, but no, I can still use this and I can hold this camera like that. Now, here's the part that actually attaches here uh, to the bottom of the cage. And this part is only basically you would get if you want to have the rails because it just allows you to fit the rails through and you can you know, put again, you can get various length rails from a uh, small rig or uh, other 50 millimeter rails and you can put it in there and this will again allow you to attach follow focus, mat backs, you know, those handles or the shoulder pad in the back. And so that's that's when you would get this. But again, if you don't care about having rails, if you don't care about having shoulder pad on that stuff or follow focus, you want to have just a, a camera that's protected, but also that allows you to have all these attachment points. Then uh, just get the cage. That's like basically the first building block. And the cage itself, this is how it looks. It is nice and sturdy. Like I said, it has all the attachment points that you really need. Uh, it's not too bulky though at the same time. It does give you a lot of attachments here where you see the HDMI and the power connection. So if you wanted to have uh, other accessories, things that are like a cable crimp, Things like that, you can all attach it there. Uh, it has a culture mount here built in. Uh, it has the NATO rail there. I have another culture mount that I attached. You also have uh, here for, you know, straps, basically. You have here one uh, on the left and the right side kind of attachments. So if you want to have this, you know, hanging off your neck, and it'll be basically a smaller camera, then you can have it this way. Uh, and like I said, and then also it allows you to kind of quickly build it up and, and do other things with it. So. Let me maybe show you uh, another sort of possible way that you might want to have this sort of this rig uh, with you. And as you can see, if you want the rig to be really small, uh, but you still want to be able to have another monitor. So again, you can, you know, you can view it. Let's say if the camera is really low, you can have a monitor to look at. Or if the camera is really high, and you have a monitor to look at. Then I would suggest uh, getting just this little monitor mount from small rig. Uh, the Field World Master Monitor, the M5A, and then this cool little battery because then it again is going to power the monitor and the camera at the same time. But as you can see, it's a very small and light package now, and you can just hold it like this. Um, so, yeah, lots of different ways definitely that you can configure the, this cage and basically these accessories that, that Small Rig provides for all their different cameras that you can use. But again, it's kind of like, like Lego. It really just comes down to your imagination. So these are just some of the possibilities or some of the setups that I've tried out with this. 
Because like I said, now with this cage, I can go really small like this if I want to, or I can make it really big, sort of a big production camera that, that me and I, you know my camera assistant can, uh, can both operate. Uh, so it gives you a lot of possibilities, basically. All right, so now let's talk about the uh, different lens adapters or speed boosters. Um, I've got three here with me. They're all from Metabones, and the reason is because I've tried some of the other uh, companies like Viltrax and uh, I forget what the other one was, but anyways, they, they weren't good, so I'm not even going to bother talking about them. So these ones are three different ones, and the reason is because this one here in the center, that's my old uh, trusty Metabone speed booster that I've used with the GH4, GH5, and a whole bunch of other cameras. Uh, over the years and it's the 0 0.71 uh, you know x crop factor um, and so it's very similar to the new ultra 0 0.71 x that i have up here this is the latest version to be honest there's really no difference optically that at least that i could spot so what's the difference between these two well the one here that i've got is the metabone speed booster xl and that's the 0 0.64 X. This one is the, the Ultra 0.71. Basically, they both work on the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera. It's just that this one effectively changes your micro four thirds image sensor and kind of make turns it into a um, super 35 millimeter, uh, so like an APS-C size more or less uh, image sensor, actually slightly larger than that. This one is uh, is effectively going to convert it to an almost the same thing as a, a full frame camera so what that means is that uh, if you like that full frame look and if you like and and you have full frame lenses then you can get this one and you're going to be very happy if you throw on there a lens that's not full frame like for example the sigma 18 to 35 you can see what happens when you when you throw it under it's the, you can see the edges basically because that lens is not a full frame lens so that's something to be aware of is that you got to make sure that if you're going to get this one you can only use it with full frame lenses because again it's you're turning it into a full frame camera but it's going to work it's going to work with full frame lenses now if you have full frame lenses and a APS-C size you know or super 35 millimeter type of uh, lenses then I would say, say you know get this version the 0 0.71 yeah you won't get as wide field of view it's you know and maybe it's gonna be a little bit harder to get in some cases shallower depth of field but this is still plenty more than you know than, than really you're gonna need to get a cinematic image it's it creates the same kind of image look you know that you get with you know most of the films that were shot over the last hundred years because most of them were shot with an on cameras different cameras and uh, some of them on film and stuff but they were all shot with pretty much an image size sensor very close to this so that's what i'm saying just get this and you can definitely get cinematic images if you like more of the full frame look and you get full frame lenses then you can get this uh, xl 0.64 version of the speed booster so when it comes to lenses for this camera uh there are native lenses uh, there's there's actually quite a bit of you know lenses to choose from different companies. Uh, I have here some of like, different ones that I've been using with this camera, but I'll tell you you don't need to get all these lenses. So the first one is the Olympus 75 to 300. It's a zoom lens. It's nothing special, I would say, when it comes to the quality. It's not bad, uh, as you guys can see, kind of from my my nature shots that I've been kind of using this mainly for. It's, it's a lens that works well, it's sharp and all that stuff, especially if you close it down by one f-stop. But that's something where you got to kind of be aware of the fact that this is a lens that you're probably going to be using outside most of the time. And also you're going to be using it on sticks. Why? Because, well, because it's a f4.8, that's the widest aperture that you're going to get with this. Uh, and that's only if you're on, uh, zoomed out at 75 millimeters. The second you zoom in to 300 millimeters, you're at f6.7. Um, so it's not the fastest lens. Also, it's not sta stabilized. So, uh, you know, and when you zoom in all the way at 300 with this, then on a camera like this, you're pretty much getting a kind of equivalent of like a 600 millimeter zoom uh, on a full frame camera. So it's a crazy nice zoom. Like, again, like you can see, you can get some nice close ups and all these nature shots. But uh, at that kind of a zoom, tiniest shake, and I mean like little, like this little microscopic shake, 
uh, is very very noticeable on this camera so you definitely uh with this lens i mean so when you're using this lens you got to be on sticks pretty much another lens that i have up here is a great lens that i've been using for years and years with gh5 gh4 and all other basically micro four thirds cameras it's the lumix vario g lens this is the first generation there's a second generation that has slight improvements not really in quality but uh there's some stabilization and, and things like that compatibility with some of the cameras but anyways this one if you can find yourself used you know version like i did of the first generation of this lumix vario g lens then get it and there's actually two of them i got this one's the longer range this is a 35 to 100 millimeters it's a constant f 2.8 which is another great thing it's, it's great if you want to use it in low light all that stuff plus it has image stabilization so uh, that means that again this lens you can actually use it uh, even when you're zoomed in all the way at 100 which this will be like this is kind of equivalent of like a 70 to 200 millimeter on a full frame camera so if you're zoomed in all the way at 100 millimeters uh you're still going to be able to handhold this and get decent shots if you have the the you know ios which is here enabled and then here's the other lumix vario g lens this is a 12 to 35 so nice wide uh, lens and then it zooms into like um almost like a you know uh, kind of a mid-range lens 50 millimeter that kind of thing um so you know and again it's f 2.8 it's got image stabilization sharp beautiful lens and again i would say these are like the two must-have lenses and and the same thing when i when i came to for example gh5 or gh4 cameras these were the two lenses that i always recommended the same thing is with the black magic pocket cinema 4k camera I think these two Lumix Vario lenses, you gotta get, you gotta start with those two. Uh, they're pretty fast, like I said, f 2.8. They're stabilized. They're just well-built lenses, and uh, they've never failed me really. And all kinds of weather and, and things like that. Um, another lens that I highly recommend is uh, this one. It's the 25 millimeter lens. Uh, I have it up here. As you can see, it's not too big, uh, and it's also the Lumix G lens, and it's. Um, it's not the the highest quality and when i mean mean by that is it's it's made from plastic uh you know so it's not like as well built as that you could say and it doesn't have weather sealing but still this is such a cheap lens that uh, I, I think you have to get it and, and and also the reason why is because this is probably like 80 percent of my work if not more is shot on this uh you know if, uh, basically focal length 25 millimeter or be equivalent to like a 50 millimeter on a full frame camera uh, and it's great it's small very light lens because it's you know made out of plastic and it's very fast so because of that um, it's like a really great portrait lens you can get nice kind of shallow depth of field and all that stuff it is just yeah I mean there, there's really nothing you know nothing bad that I can say about this lens whether you start with just this lens or with these two lenses then you get that one I think you're pretty much going to be set for majority of shooting. There's, there's not going to be many uh, cases where you're going to require other lenses. And that's why I would say these three here, these are the, the must-haves. Hopefully this answers your questions about what lenses to get uh, for the Blackmagic Packet Cinema 4K camera. All right, so now I want to talk about some interesting things I learned uh, when it comes to the different ISO settings on, on the Blackmagic Packet 4K camera. As you probably already know, this camera has two native ISOs, uh, which is 400 and 3200. Now, when you're shooting in RAW, uh, anywhere between ISO 100 and 1000, uh, it almost doesn't matter because uh, you're going to be shooting in the first native ISO, which is 400. Uh, and so you can change, the, obviously, uh, your ISO setting uh, later on in your editing or color grading application. Just keep in mind that you'll be locked into this first base ISO, meaning you will not be able to go uh, beyond any of these values of 100 to 1000 ISO. As you can see up here, uh, these are the only options that are kind of showing up for me inside DaVinci Resolve. Now, when you film in RAW in uh, any of the higher ISOs than uh, 1000, meaning uh, ISO uh, 1250, uh, all the way up to ISO 6400, then effectively you're uh, shooting in the second native ISO, uh, which is ISO 3200. So again, in post, uh, later on in your editing color grading application, you will be able to, again, change your ISO settings, since, again, you're shooting in RAW, 
but just know that you will not be able to go any lower than 1250 and you will not be able to go any higher than 6400 as you can see up here uh, inside DaVinci Resolve. So now what's going to happen when you shoot on the Blackmagic Pocket 4K camera in RAW and ISO higher than 6400? Here I have a clip that was shot in RAW and ISO 8000. And when I try to go and change the settings, you'll see it shows up uh, the option of 8000, but there's nothing else, meaning you're going to be stuck uh, because you can't change uh, your ISO setting uh, after the fact. Here I have another clip that was shot in ISO 10,000. And again, you see that's the only option that shows up. And here's another clip uh, shot in 16,000 ISO. And the same thing for 20,000 and the 25,600 ISO also. That's the only setting that I have. So just keep that in mind, guys, that whenever you're shooting in RAW on the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K camera, uh, it, because of the whole dual in native ISO, uh, you're not really going to be able to kind of jump around uh, later on and have as much freedom maybe uh, as you can with some other cameras. Uh, at the same time, though, you do have the advantage of having the, the two dual native ISOs. But just kind of know that you are essentially kind of locking yourself in there, especially if you, once you start going uh, over, like I said, 6400 ISO. So anyways, hopefully you guys liked this video. If you did and you found it useful, then uh, let me know in the comment section below. Uh, hit that like button. Uh, and if you haven't already subscribed, but even better actually than subscribe because we all know YouTube uh, Barely notifies anybody who subscribes to a YouTube channel uh, If you actually want to be notified whether it's different camera gear reviews filmmaking tutorials all that kind of stuff Just go to my website tomantosfilms.com uh, uh, You over there you'll find a whole bunch of tutorials like I said uh, Lighting tutorials lots and things like that that I give away for free you can download from my website plus uh, you can subscribe to my newsletter and this way you'll get a a little you know email notification letting you know when I have some cool new videos coming out or things like that if you guys have actually questions or anything like that related to this or anything any other kind of filmmaking questions uh, and you want them answered right away again best way to do that is to go to my website and leave me a comment on one of my articles or just go to my contact page and you can uh, drop me an email there anyways I'll see you guys in the next video bye